Woohoo! Woo, you're here. I'm not. Where did I go? I'm that. There I am. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of Former's Friday. We're streaming live from the uh, Dirt Mound headquarters here for Pop Culture Network. Just throw out my bottom third here. Mm. All right, guys. Uh, so here's the deal. Usually the geek does this show. He's been doing the show for, I don't know, two years now, maybe something like that. Um, I did it for a while. Um, Cordicon did it for a while. Mr. TF Prime did it for a while. We've had a bunch of people do the show over the years. Geek has been doing it. I fill in for him every now and again, but he apparently has been very sick. Uh, the last couple of weeks, he's been very ill, has been unable to do shows for a while. So uh, I told him, you know, don't worry about it. I'll jump in. I'll take care of it. You know, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it, it sucks that he can't be here. Oh, you know what? I forgot to turn on this light over here. Oh, look at that. That brightens things up. And then I usually turn off this one because it just kind of gets like, there we go. Hey, look, you can kind of see the stuff on my in my background there. All right. Um, so anyway, he's been very sick. He's been very unable to do the show. So he asked if I would step in and and do it. And I said, fine. Um, I like doing them live like this, these live stream ones, because one, there's the chat on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, uh, if you're watching this embedded somewhere like on Facebook or something uh, or on Twitter or something, and you, if you click at the top of the window where the little title uh, appears, it'll take you to the YouTube page. There's actually a chat. Um, so you can get in on the chat if you want to. You can ask questions and stuff while I'm doing it. Also, I don't have to do editing because that's the big thing that kills so much of the shows on Pop Culture Network is the editing. Just having to take the video and process it and cut it up and piece it back together and you know all the stuff that we do. So if I can just do it live as a stream, I'm happy because that is so much less work. So I hope you guys like the live ones. I know the, the picture is not as crisp and clear because when you're live streaming, it compresses and everything, and it doesn't look as nice as it, as it would with a prepackaged uh, you know, video segment. But I like getting the feedback live uh, from you guys and, you know, again, um, just the fact that I don't have to do the extra work. So today, um, I, I told the geek, don't worry about it. I know you're sick. I'll, t I'll fill in, take care of it for you. Um, and I've got these. I'm going to turn off my lower third here. Um I picked these up at Walgreens a while ago, and they've just been sitting on a shelf just waiting for me to do something with them. Um, th these are the clone figures. If you remember back in the original Transformers line, um, they came out with these figures. And the idea is uh, the, these two uh, Transformers, there are second versions of them. Um, there's another red guy that looks just like this, except he turns into a race car, whereas the one in this box turns into the jet. Uh, and this guy turns into an eagle, and there's one that looks just like him that turns into a wolf, I think, coyote, wolf. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't have those other two figures because right now they're only available in a giant box set. Um, it's the Chaos on Velociraptor. I don't remember what it's called, uh, but it, I, I'm not going to spend you know a hundred and some odd dollars for the box set just to get the two figures that go on the other hand of this. But I do think they're going to release them separately later on down the road, so maybe something we revisit. Um, but I'm not here to look at these obviously and compare them to the other ones and see do the clones work? Do they look like um, you know the other versions very well? My thought is. Let's say you're you know, somewhat of a casual fan, whatever, and you go into Walgreens, your local Walgreens, and you see these sitting there. Or maybe someone posts something on Facebook, you follow the link. Right now, these are $12.99 on the Walgreens website if you want to go order them, which is fairly cheap, especially for the two figures. Um, but my thought is, how do these stand up as just Transformers? Um, you, you know, the clone gimmick aside, if you walk in and buy this two-pack and get two figures that transform... Is it worth it? Are they good figures? Do they look cool? Do they transform well? Um, so I thought that was a kind of a valid question to ask as, as a standalone product, just as two uh, kind of G1 looking transformers. And that's, that's I think, uh, a key thing about these. They, they're not movie figures. Um, they don't look like they're from a cartoon show. Uh, they look like G1 big bulky which i like i prefer that in my transformer styles but they look like big bulky figures so we're going to pop these open and take a look and and look at them along the lines of does this work well as a standalone toy 
Um, if, if you're somebody who wants to get a couple Transformers to throw on your desk at work uh, or something like that, or maybe you just haven't bought any in a while. And, uh, you know, there's a Walgreens near you and you can walk in and, and pick them up. Um, so that being said, let us get this box open. Oh, first of all, I guess we'll take a look at the box. Um, says Walgreens exclusive right there. So you got that little sticker uh, not available anywhere else unless you're buying them secondhand online. Um, it shows the alternate forms of the uh, two figures, but you can see them there through the window. Uh, and it's got the Transformers uh, Generations. But, but I'm, I'm looking at the video, and the video is always wrong. It's the opposite of where I'm at. Uh, it's got the Generations logo up here. So um, Titans Return down there. You got the Decepticon on that side. You've got some artwork on this side. And then on the back, uh, it shows them in their two modes. It shows that they, uh, you know, of course, transform. Uh, talks about, it mentions their alternate halves so wingspan uh up here at the top uh his alternate is pounce and then you have cloud raker down here and his alternate is fast clash which i think fast clash wasn't the original g1 name for his alternate what for his clone right that was um was it fast lane and they can't do fast lane now maybe because of the wwe pay-per-view or something i don't know uh so all right Let's pop this open. Do, 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 do. All right, there's our figures. Let's set them aside for a second and check out the rest of the box here. You got your nifty uh, cardboard backdrop. Um, I actually, I actually do like looking through some of these, the, the little drawings that they put on here. Uh, a lot of times, it's not the figures you have; it's like other random stuff there's perceptor on here um oh and the 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 other figures that fit together with uh blaster to make the uh yeah that's blaster up there uh all right anyway so still uh it's fun to look through all the little drawings on there and figure out who some of those people are and then we've got okay that's it for the box nothing else in there we got two trading cards in here there's one for each of the characters so Again, these go in a drawer, uh, never to see the light of day again. And then we've got our instructions, uh, which show how to transform your characters. Um, everything looks pretty much straightforward. Oh, one interesting thing is uh, you can put a pilot inside of uh, Sky Cloud Raker. Cloud Raker. Um, it looks like uh, you can open up the cockpit and put a little... Um, head guy in there, uh, headmaster thing, whatever, from the line. So that's cool. All right, so our figures in plastic with a whole lot of little bits of plastic holding everything in place. So let's cut open. We'll start up here with the eagle. What's his name? The bird thing. Uh, sky, sky clone, sky clash. Wingspan. Wingspan. I was... Not at all close. Okay, so we'll take a look at Wingspan here. Let me get all these cut out. Oh, I'm sure that's great right in the microphone. I bet you love hearing all of that plastic crunching really loud. Probably on headphones at work. I'm like, oh, God. All right. So here's Wingspan. Now, pull them out of the package here. Take a look at them. Um, now, like I said before, boxy figure. I like that. I like the big boxy figures. Um, generally speaking, I like the look of robots as big, powerful robots, not skinny little um, things. But, man, I got to say, he feels light. Uh, he feels like there's less plastic in this than there is in a muscle figure. Uh, this guy is super light. Um, now, one of the things... Because it looks like because of the way he transforms and the way certain pieces, um, you know, hide inside other pieces, there's a lot of empty space in here. Uh, you can see in the forearms here, there's a lot of empty space. Maybe you can't see it. I don't know. But in the legs here, it's a big empty spot. So from behind, uh, doesn't look so great. But I think straight on, he looks like a, a decent looking uh, transformable robot. Uh, it's got a nice look to him. There's not a lot. There's uh, the only obvious kibble that really stands out is on his forearms. You can see the bird feet. 
itty bitty bird feet there. Um, but you know, otherwise, for the most part, I think he looks pretty good. And just taking a look at the basic articulation, um, so you've got your you got your shoulders, and your shoulders move around a whole bunch of different ways. You got your elbows that are on the big ball joint there; those move around. Hand doesn't do anything. Wrist doesn't do anything. Head head will twist. Okay, that's cool. Uh, nothing in the midsection. It doesn't look like. Yeah, midsection doesn't move at all. But you do have the uh, hip joints in here. You got some twist on the leg. You got a knee. All right, so there you go. So not a lot of articulation, but there's enough there that you can pose it and move it around. Um, they don't come with any sort of accessories or weapons, but uh, the hands have that uh, basic hole that we've seen on most of the characters for the last couple waves. So it looks like they're compatible with other ones or in the Target Master ones um, that came out, I think, before the ones with the heads, the Headmaster ones. Um, they had the little robot guys that could become guns and stuff. So looks like they're compatible with all of that stuff. So that all looks fine. Um, you can see he's got the Decepticon logo down there right on the crotch. Um, so if anyone's, uh, you know, checking him out, they're going to see that he's actually a bad guy. And then he does have one of these heat sensitive uh, logos here. And that's to signify which one you're looking at, which is one of the old g1 gimmicks that's come back here with the heat sensitive rub to see whether or not this is wingspan or pounce um so you can look at that logo when he's in robot mode the only problem is i can see it and it's not that warm out now i mean it's like 14 degrees outside or something and i've got the heat on on here obviously but i don't keep it that hot uh and you can see the logo uh it, it's it's obvious there so not the greatest use of that technology. But overall, I'd say you put this robot up on your shelf. People are going to know it's a Transformer. It looks like a Transformer. Looks pretty good, except for, uh, you know, that that piece of uh, kibble there. But I think for the most part, I like the colors. I like the look. Um, it, it's got a, you know, decent look to it. So, all right, let's see if we can get this Transform. I'm not looking at the instructions because I'm a man. And uh, so I'm just going to do this. Let's see here. Do I... Do I have to twist the head to get... Okay, so you got to twist the head to get the head down here. These move this way. We've got feet here. Do these feet actually... The hand doesn't actually go anywhere. It doesn't hide. So it's just stuck there. Okay, so that's something. Eh. Nothing special, really, as far as that goes. Uh, all right, I'm going to have to look at the instructions here because... These wings, I'm not exactly sure how they're gonna how this works, how this whole midsection works. We've got we've got the tail feathers sticking up here, and these legs become the wings, but I'm not exactly sure. Oh, this moves. Oh, these move out like this. Okay, all right. Well, that helps a little bit. Make a little bit of sense out of it. But still, is this all the legs do? And these arms. These arms hide somewhere. Can you fold them in somehow? Hmm. All right, so this is this is as best as I can get it right now. So I'm going to grab the instructions here just real quick. Now, now I'm a small child. I have to look at the instructions. What did I miss? Uh, let's see. The feet go down. This comes out here. How? Okay, what? Okay, so according to the instructions, these should just fold up and out of the way. They should just fold fold up and out of the way. They do not. Put this back down. This is the leg. The leg goes out. You pull it out oh, 90 degrees. Nope. We're somehow... This is supposed to tab together. What the heck is going on with this thing? Oh, is that how? It, okay. Oh my god! I know this is thrilling for you. You're just look, having, as far as you can tell, I'm just looking down at my crotch. There's nothing you can really see here. Uh, okay. So, in order to get the wing to actually fit in there, 
these the, the legs come out at an angle like this. They don't line up flush with the body. So it's a little awkward uh, when you first do that transformation because when you see, I don't know if there's a good way to show it on here. Okay, so when you see it pull out from here, your inclination is to make this white line come up to the side of the body. And you think, well, I got to move this out of the way uh, to somehow stick it in there, but it doesn't really work. If you look real close, there's a little pin on here and there's a tiny little divot on this side where they, they kind of latch together. It's not a satisfying click. Um, they don't like tab and click into place. They just kind of hold them in that spot and it's, it's really kind of loose. So it's not the greatest attachment uh, getting those pieces together. Um, so that is a little, little awkward part there. But, I mean, I guess it works. Um, they're not, you know, falling randomly. So here it turns into the bird. Um, now, of course, you know, it's a robot bird. It's not going to look like an actual bird. It's not like a Beast Wars thing that's going to look like, a, you know, an actual animal. Um, colors are kind of funky with the hot pink on the arms there. Um, but you can see, you know, it, it, it has the basic shape. Um, but I gotta say, honestly, the, the way the, the legs are just kind of stuck on at the bottom, um, it just looks like drooping granny. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna finish that sentence. Uh, it just looks bad. It just looks bad, especially, uh, now the, the legs, when they come back here, there's no tabs, there's no, um nothing for them to snap into place there they're just kind of sitting there and the forearm joint is still kind of active um so you just kind of balance them i guess he's supposed to sit kind of at an up angle um so he's kind of like he's taking off or you know looking up whatever as opposed to sitting flat uh like a laser beak or, or somebody like that so I mean, I guess it kind of works, but like if you look at the midsection, especially through here, you can see that there are these big, open, gaping hole areas where you can see all the way through uh, to the other side, which just doesn't look very good to me. So, I mean, honestly, it's and especially with, look at the, the the way the feet are just kind of hanging off the uh, middle of the wings there, and the wings are super thick there where the feet come in. So. I mean, honestly, as the robot, I think it looked all right. It looks, you know, pretty cool for the giant robot part. But as a robotic bird thing, it just doesn't work as well for me. I am not uh, buying it one way or another. Uh, this is this is not a good look. So he's going to go on display uh, as the uh, robot. Um, and I think that's really... Where the money is on that guy so again you're gonna if you're one of those you know just wants to buy a couple transformers throw them on your shelf at work this one is the one that you're gonna leave as the robot and it can turn into the bird but i don't think you really want to so back into robot mode it goes and uh pretty decent look as far as you know, just that little assassin in your stance there fella uh and it, that looks all right as the as the big robot so all right Meh, meh, kind of 50 50 on that guy all right let's hope that wings fan right wingspan nope not wingspan cloud raker let's hope the cloud raker fares better super loud again you're welcome check this out come on buddy here we go All right, set the knife aside somewhere so I don't hurt myself. We're all done with that. All right, so another big boxy robot. And again, I love the look of this robot. I like the red. The red is nice. Um, there's no actual chrome or shiny. Uh, I guess there's a little bit like on the legs. But for the most part, uh, like this is molded white. This is molded red. Um, so there's not really a whole lot of paint application. It's mostly the way it was uh, molded together. A little bit of paint, you know, like on the chest, 
um, and a little bit like down there on the uh, legs. But for again, uh, big boxy robot on the back. You can see there's the cockpit piece, but you can see how hollow it is. Uh, if it, I wish it had like a little twist. So you could pull it up and twist it over and put it back down. So it'd be showing this side of it. Um, I think it would look a little bit better than the way he does. But he does have a fin on his head. I mean, so that's something. Uh, but for the most part, you know, and most Transformers from the back really aren't that, you know, great looking as far as figures go. But at least I don't see any big hollow areas. Um, everything looks covered up pretty well like the arms look solid the legs look solid i think there's some hollowness under here but it's covered up by these black panels uh that look like they're part of the wings or um tail wings or whatever um so for the most part this guy is a robot also looks really cool hopefully his alt mode uh fares a little better and i can see there's a lot of twisting and stuff going on in this guy so i'm gonna look at the okay look at the instructions a little bit we're gonna turn the head around and then we're going to put the arms up. So let's see. And then the arms flip up this way into his chest. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to fold it like this and pull his legs apart. That's got to hurt. And then pull them. What are we doing here? Flipping the oh man, okay. So here's again the transformer instructions really need a lot of work when you when you are trying to follow them, they are difficult sometimes to figure out like what it is. You just see these little arrows, like whoop, something moves. Okay, and then you got to compare the pictures and try to figure out what exactly moved between the two. All right, put these legs down. Now we're gonna move these legs back. back like this looks like oh something snapped into place there so that's okay so we're starting to get we're starting to get that plain shape that body coming together i'm gonna bring the canopy up here into place oh and that snapped in that's pretty nice and then you've got some landing gear pops out the bottom to help it sit upright all right so pretty easy transformation as far as that goes. So there is your jet. And except for the hands sticking out the back there, those are obviously hands. I think that looks pretty good uh, straight on. I mean, you you look at it, you obviously know it's a jet. Um, he is robotic, you know, so you do have robot parts all over the place. Um, and... The arms are a little funky sitting up here. Um, they're supposed to look like intake vents uh, pulling, you know, air through and having them go through these uh, kind of rocket jet things and kind of works, kind of doesn't work. And you do see some hollow, see some hollow parts there on the side. So that's a little iffy, but a um, little fold out landing gear piece to help it sit steady when you've got it sitting on a shelf somewhere. Um, and and uh, like when I was, you know, putting it together, there's a couple tabs uh, from where these uh, leg pieces attach to the side. Um, so that's pretty nice. Um, but again, you can see there's a lot of hollow space, a lot of just kind of uh, dead uh, areas there. Uh, and from the other side, from the bottom side, terrible. <laughs> Look, there's there's hollow space. There's a face. There's uh, is that a giant screw? There's a giant screw right in the middle of it. So I mean, granted, uh, you know, when when you've got a the vehicle, you're you're gonna be looking at it like this. You're gonna be looking at it like this. You're not gonna be looking at the bottom side, but still, that's that's pretty bad. So uh, again, not great in the alt mode. It it works and it does its job and I can kind of see this not being as bad especially if it's sitting on again, sitting on a shelf or something uh where you're going to have it on display. Not 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 too terrible. Um but not the greatest. Uh but considering, you know, originally this was uh 20 bucks, so you're paying 10 bucks a figure for these two figures. Now it's 12.99, you're paying 6.50 a figure. Um so I mean as far as price goes, it's really not bad at all. Um, even when they were full price, not the greatest, but still uh, pretty decent. This I could 
I could probably be okay leaving up, you know, sitting on a shelf as the jet. But again, uh, I think I'd much rather have it in the robot mode. I'm going to flip them around here real quick. Um, and I'm trying to see. Oh, all right. One thing I wanted to check out first before I, I transform him all the way back. Uh, there was a spot where you could put a Minicon in as a pilot. Um, so, okay. So, again, here's the jet mode. Um, there's a spot. I, now, I thought originally looking at the artwork that, that somehow this opened up, but obviously uh, it doesn't because that's hollow. So here in the in the main part of the body, um, I can see that there's a little joint here. So that's got to be the spot that opens. Um, but I don't see an obvious place. Usually there's an obvious spot where, like, you stick in your fingernail and pull it up, um, and it opens up, and it's not obvious. Um Huh. So here's so uh, th this piece does open up, but there's no hollow part in there to put a guy. Uh, you can see there's there are these little red lines, um, and there's some in the lid. If you try to put a guy in there, you're gonna juice them. It's gonna squish them. And how the heck is a character supposed to fit in there? Oh, it doesn't fit in there. This just becomes a chair. So you open this up, and then you're supposed to take a minicon and just sit him on there like he's on a bobsled uh, or toboggan or something, and he's he's just going to sit there and fly. It doesn't close and give him a place like to hide in there. Um, it just kind of goes in. So, I mean, it's whatever. Uh, again, not the greatest um but i mean at least it gives you the option so they at least took the extra effort to put a little seat there where you can put a guy uh, and you can see that's also again right where that heat sensitive um so if it's going to be the jet or if it's going to be the um what's it, race car uh fast clash is the other one turns into a race car of course the jet you can see the jet symbol uh you know the heat transfer isn't uh it isn't well hidden, but nonetheless, there it is. Um, so, I mean, okay, they took the extra step. They, they put a small piece of landing gear here uh, to help him, you know, sit upright. And they do have a spot that opens up where you you could uh, put a little Titan Master Minicon, whatever, in there. Um, so I, I give them points for the effort. Um, the execution may not be the greatest of all time, but, you know, hey, it, it works out for the most part. All right, so let's see if I can switch him back quickly here because there's one other thing I want to check on. Transforming him back. Here's a clue. You got to do the feet feet before fins. If you try to fold the fins before you move the feet, the feet won't come out. So there's a, there's a tip for you. You learned something at least out of this whole experience. All right. So when he's like this, you can open the chest because, uh, I mean, it just opens, like robot mode. So does that do anything? No? I know the new uh, Power of the Primes have a piece that attaches to the chest. I wondered if there was some sort of interoperability that way, but it, it's not the right size and shape. So you can't uh, put something like that on there at all. So that does not work. Um, the other thing I was hoping was to do something with uh, this this back piece, like I said, I don't I don't like the look of that. I was hoping maybe I could do something else, since it flips up. See, maybe I could flip up and manipulate it and push it down this way so it covers. But you can't. Uh, there's nothing you can really do. You can put a dunce cap on them. It looks like, uh, but nothing you can really do with that. And you can flip up the landing gear if you want, but that doesn't really help with his fin head. So um, again. This guy overall in the robot mode again looks great. Robot mode on both of these looks great. And, and I think that was also the case with the old clones too, right? Because they had to be able to um, go on there. Oh, hey, I just saw a message here from Necropath. It looks like you actually posted this like six minutes ago and I'm just now catching it, paying attention. But hey, um, new to the channel. So thanks for joining in. I've actually picked up a lot of new subscribers in the last few weeks. It's crazy. Uh, I don't know what happened, but <laughs> a lot more views, a lot more subscribers. I'm loving it. Thanks, guys, for checking out the channel. I appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, you can see here robot mode looks really great. Uh, but, again, the alt mode, not perfect. But I think the alt mode on this definitely works better than it does for this guy. Um, this one, robot mode looks okay. 
it's just really not too excited about this guy in general. But this one, this one actually works out for me. I could play around with this one. I can see this one being all right. Uh, and having the options of being able to do some extra stuff with it, that's always a good deal too. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for the show today. I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank all the new subscribers, new viewers like uh, Necropath here uh, who's joined um you know, we, we try to do a lot of different stuff uh, on this channel. This is part of the Pop Culture Network. Pop Culture Network, though, there's a lot more stuff if you find Pop Culture Network. But here, I tend to do a lot of the live streaming stuff. If you like Masters of the Universe, we do a lot of the Masters of the Galaxy podcast and Fans of Power podcast we do through here. Um, we also repost the Waffle Mafia podcast, which is from Facebook. Um, which, oddly enough, you say Waffle Mafia, what the heck is that? Well, that's another Masters of the Universe podcast, uh, if you can believe it or not. Um, and then, uh, you know, anytime I do some toy reviews and stuff, again, I like to do it live like this, so hopefully this is working out for you guys, too. Uh, might be a controversial topic, says Necropath. What do you think of these overpriced custom sellers like Mad Duck Studios that sell like $125 posters? I really think it hurts the community. Um I don't know Mad Duck specifically. I mean, the name kind of sounds familiar, but off the top of my head, I can't think of anything specific that's come from them. Um, I, stuff that's expensive like that, whenever it's like uh, someone who does customs uh, or some of these third-party um, sellers that make stuff, it's, you know, if it was in stores, it would be like a $50 figure, but because it's something that's, that's custom or a small run through their, um, you know, Filipino factory or, or, you know, wherever they make some of these smaller run stuff uh, because they do that, it's like 125 or $150 for what would be a $50 figure. I, I don't, I don't so much have a problem with them because they are off the beaten path. You know what I mean? Like it's a collector's thing. Someone has to go out and find that stuff. Um, like I like customs as far as if I, if I said to somebody, Hey, I like this guy, but I wish he was blue. Can I give it to you and you paint it blue? And then I have a one of a kind blue one I can put on my shelf. Love that stuff. Um, but as far as, uh, Oh, um, they do He-Man posters. Okay. Mad Duck Studios does He-Man posters. Um, the, the, I, I see what you're saying in your other post, and I don't want to say the name for anyone that's watching this later because I, I, I try not to throw people under the bus, um, you know, generally speaking, if I can help it, uh, unless they're doing something really, really bad. But when a couple of years ago, there was a convention, I think it was the Transformers uh, TFCon, um, they told the people who were selling third party stuff at their booths they had to get rid of it. You can't sell it here at the con. This is co-run by Hasbro or co-sponsored by Hasbro or whatever. Um, so you can't have that third party stuff here. And I'm okay with them saying that you can't mix it in, especially it's something that, that Hasbro is promoting um, or, or, or helping to uh, promote. Um, it, what bothers me, I guess, is when it, it's in a spot that takes away. So if someone um, and, and I know what you're talking about um, with this particular person, um, someone who promotes a lot of, say, Masters of the Universe stuff, and then they're going to take some third party off brand Masters of the Universe unlicensed stuff like it's someone's own original artwork, but they're mass producing it and selling it these collectors uh, things and, and they're. Th that person is promoting it the same way they're promoting the legitimate stuff. I think that is an issue, um, especially because a lot of these, we, we say, you know, like, oh, it's a small studio, but this is actually, a, uh, most of them are really well done company. Like the company actually pays people's wages. Um, like that is their job is they make the third party transformers or they make some of these um, collectible poster prints um, or things like that. Um, and I think, you know, you're not necessarily dealing with someone who's making a custom one of a kind or an artist who makes a whole bunch of prints. Like if there's an artist that does, I did a Thundercats one Tuesday. I'm doing a Transformers one uh, next Wednesday. Um, next month, I'm going to do a Silverhawks one. You know, they're just doing a bunch of stuff as opposed to some of these that are like every month we put out a new He-Man print, but it's unlicensed. It's unsponsored. Um, but you know, it's a small print run, so it's a high collectible, so pays a lot of money. You know, that is not, I don't think that's the same. Uh, there is a difference 
um, uh, with with some of these uh, companies doing the third parties and the prints. Um, uh, the person who promotes it probably gets a cut of the profits. Um, it's not a good deal, but he reviews it as it's amazing. The artwork is mediocre at best, and it doesn't hold up to the original 80s He-Man art. Um, th that's another... There's two other issues that are happening there. Um, one, yeah, whether or not they get a cut. Um, a lot of guys you'll find actually do it just to get free product. Um, they just like to get the free stuff and just, you know, have walls covered in free stuff, shelves covered in free stuff. Like, I didn't pay for any of this, but I do the reviews, so I get all the free stuff. And so then it's always amazing, right? Because um, that's the other thing that happens is everything is great. Everything they review is amazing. Everything's fantastic because they don't want to hurt and I'm just getting a notification on my phone. You're welcome. Um, they don't want to get hurt in this run they're getting of getting free sponsored stuff, right? Because who wants to say, like, if 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 I'd been sent these by Hasbro and Hasbro said, we want to, you know, we'll give you these for free, but we just want you to do a review of them and do them on your video, I would do that. But there is a danger that I might look at this one and go, eh, I don't really like the way it transforms but I'll say it's good. I'll say, oh, look, it's a robot bird. It looks really cool. Look at the colors on it. And I won't bring up the negative stuff because then I'd be afraid Hasbro's not going to send me the free stuff. So I think there is a legitimate concern with a lot of these different channels and websites and, and things that get the free product because you only hear the positive stuff. Oh, this is so great. This is so cool. Look at these. And it's they're so awesome. The other thing is a lot of times when they get the sponsored stuff in, they're not worried about the price, right? So if they get a toy and it's a $70 toy and they're like, oh, wow, look at this toy. This thing's great. And this, it does this and it does that. And it makes sliced bread and it'll walk your dog and it'll tuck in grandma at night. That's fantastic. That's a great toy. It's also $70. Is it worth $70? You know, compared to another toy on the market that might be $40. And the $40 one will kiss your grandma at night. It won't tuck her in, but it'll still walk your dog. Is it just as good? Is it worth more because it's 40 as opposed to 70? You know, so there are a lot of questions when it comes to the price of things. Um, so I do take samples. And if I take a sample, I will I will let people know that it's a sample. It was something that was given to me. Um, but what I won't do is I will never let anyone, and especially with live, I mean, you can't really you know argue with live. But if I, if I make a video package for a product that I then post on the website or throw up on this channel, um, I don't let anyone else see it beforehand. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to send it to the company and have them look at it and say whether or not it's okay for me to say that stuff. Um, like comics. I get a lot of comics. Comics is something, toys are kind of a side thing for me, but for my main thing is comics. I get a lot of PDFs of comics. Some I will never even talk about. I, I read through them and I'm just like, this book is not worth talking about. Some I don't like at all. And I'll just sit straight up and say, I don't like this book. This book was terrible as it came out. This is just an awful, awful book. It may be a free review copy, and it may piss people off. And I've actually had some publishers, uh, after we've done some reviews, either on the Comaholic show or on some that I've just done myself, they've stopped giving us samples. They stopped sending out review copies. Like, suddenly we're not on the list anymore because they sent us something, and we said it wasn't, it wasn't any good. And uh, they were upset about that. So, yeah, that is a concern that you run into in a lot of these. So that's, I think, a key thing to pay attention to is whether or not they say something was sponsored or these were sent in by the company for review or something like that. Um, some will never tell you. Um, so that's an issue to, to keep a hold of. Some will, will they'll say it, but they just say it very quickly at the beginning or at the end, and they just kind of move beyond it. Um, so that's some stuff to keep in mind. Um, Necropath says, I got an amazing Earl Norm replica Skeletor poster for $17 on eBay. I'm just saying it's way better and not $125, and that is true. One last question. I got into collecting He-Man. Do you recommend signing up for Super 7 subscriptions? $350 for eight figures doesn't sound like a good deal to me. Okay. This is a completely different topic. This is not Formers Friday. I, I will talk about this quickly. Um, and you can find other stuff where this has been discussed. I discussed this on the It Figures podcast a long time ago when Mattel started bringing this up. We talked about it on That New Toy Smell a long time ago. Um, since we're getting off of Transformers, though, Necropath, just for you, quick little thing here. I've never liked the idea of mail order subscriptions on those figures. I want He-Man in retail. I want to be able to walk into a store and look at them on the shelf and pick the one I want and take it. 
Um, the idea of the subscription just doesn't work for me. Um, unless you're the type of person that wants every single figure, the subscription just doesn't make sense. Um, and they'll, they'll always blast you and warn you, hey, if, you, if we don't get enough subscriptions, we can't continue through with this. Tough. You know, it, it'll come back. It may take five years, 10 years for another line to come along, but it'll just happen. Uh, and, and, and it, that's just life. You know, I've learned, uh, you know, if I wait long enough for something, Voltron, Voltron disappeared. It came back It disappeared. It came back. I followed it every time. Um, you know, things just go in cycles. It'll go away. It'll come back. Sectars are making a return on Kickstarter as we speak right now. You wait long enough. Everything will come back. Um, so I don't like the subscription model in general because i don't want everything i'm not i'm not generally the type of collector that has to own everything unless it's tron and if it's tron i'll buy stupid pops and dorbs just because i want the tron figures i'll you know tron but you but i'm not signing up for every pop vinyl just to get the tron ones you know what i mean so um so yeah i don't like the subscription model i'd, I'd like to see the subscriptions go away i know a lot of people like the classics line i i, I kind of don't because i'd rather see $15 figures in retail as opposed to $30 figures mail order only. Um, but, you know, I'm in the minority as far as He-Man fans go uh, with a lot of that stuff. But anyway, all right. We're going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I want to thank you guys for checking it out. Don't forget to go to popculturenetwork.com. You can find out, we can find more podcasts. You can find uh, comic previews you can find uh press releases we get news items stuff like that we throw out there on the site so you can find all that stuff there um and then again like i said on this channel you find a lot of weird different stuff uh, mostly live stream stuff i like to do on here um, as i get more toys and live stream through them uh you know i just did a voltron one last week and it's it's doing pretty good it's getting a lot of views so i enjoy that so anyway guys that's gonna do it for me thanks for watching hopefully the geek will be back uh next week to take back over former's Fridays. I hope he's feeling better. Um, make sure you go to the Geeks Obscure Reviews here on YouTube. Let him know you're thinking about him and you're hoping he feels better. Uh, but that's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.